point. Yes. Yeah. If you have a vision for your life from God, and you know it's from God, then that vision dictates the plan for your life. So the first thing is you need to document that vision. You have to write it down. Mm. You know, God already told the people, that, and he said, he said this to Habakkuk as well, he says, write the vision down. The average person watching this program today have no documented vision for their future. It's important to write it down, because once you write it down, you've committed yourself on paper. And by the way, your vision may expand as you grow. It grows, but you need to document it. That's number one. Then secondly, you need to, to, to create a plan to, create, to get you to your vision. You know, and your, your plan is determined by your vision. If, if you want to be a plumber, for example, then you learn certain things. If you want to be a pilot, then you, that dictates what you study. Your vision dictates your plan. Mm. Then your third and important uh, item is people. If you want to fulfill a vision, you never allow people who ain't going nowhere to take you with them. You know, uh, your vision dictates who you associate with. If you want to be a winner, you don't keep coming with losers. That's right. Uh, folks who ain't doing nothing always want you to do it with them. Uh, people who ain't going nowhere want you to go with them, have you noticed? But a person of vision chooses their friends based on their destination. And that's why you and I, based on the work we've called to do, we can't just hang out with anybody. That's right. We choose our friends carefully. Very carefully. Matter of fact, you are stuck with your brothers and sisters, but you can choose your friends. That's right. And your friends are more important than brothers and sisters because your friends stick closer than your brothers and sisters. May I ask a question, and then we'll go back to the tent. How do you know when a vision is from God? Very important question. Vision is not ambition. And most people are driven by ambitions rather than vision. A vision from God will never benefit you. When you get a vision from God, it benefits other people. Wow. It makes them better, it makes yeah. them prosper, makes them succeed, makes them progress, it heals them, it blesses them. In other words, a vision from God is never self-centered, it's other-centered. Give the Lord a mighty hand for that. Wow. <laughs> you remember Joseph, when Joseph saw his vision, yeah. Joseph's vision was not about him. Joseph saw himself sitting on a throne, feeding his people, the family. Your vision, Jesus, the Bible says the joy that was set before Jesus, he enjoyed the cross. Right. What joy? He saw millions being restored back to the kingdom of God. He saw men and women being redeemed. In other words, it was other people that motivated his activity. So if you want to know if you have vision from God, then check to see whether it is benefiting you. If you, you know, if, if you have a, a vision of a big house, that's not a vision from God. A vision of a nice car, that's not a vision from God. Most of the Christians who say they got a vision, they got a big business, a big house, of nice clothes. That's not a vision. Uh, that's probably either desire or covetousness. <laughs> you know, that's right. if you have one of this. But a vision from God will always improve humanity, uplift the downtrodden, improve those who have been destitute, and make men's lives better. And that's why a vision is never self-promoting. It always promotes others. And that's why this vision you have is from God. I mean, you, people don't know that you are the biggest slave because the, the true leader is the slave. Christ says, the greatest among you shall be the slave of all. Amen. I mean, you flew here from Brazil, landed here after all those hours, and got to be up on this set with me. You know, I just flew from London, you know, eight hours to be here for this show. And people look at us and they think, well, we're on a show, we, we, this is nice. It isn't. We are slaves. While you're sleeping, we're flying. And we love it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Because you see, your vision gives you energy. Yeah. It's Absolutely your purpose does. that gives you fulfillment. And so when you have a vision that helps people, helps bring healing, encouragement, uh, it admonishes, edifies, that's a true vision from God. So we never confuse ambition with vision. Ambition is not bad, but if it promotes personal and private gratification, it's not from God. And so visions that, that are from God are always other promoting, not self-promoting. Now tomorrow on the program, I want you to talk about the obstacles to visions. Yes. But, uh, and, and then finish the 10, the list of 10. Can, yes. can you give me just one or two more quickly? Yes. Uh, in order for you to fulfill your vision, you must choose your library very carefully. 
what to read, what to watch. What to read. I, I think people don't appreciate the fact that uh, what you listen to and what you read and what you hear uh, affect where you're going. So if you want to fulfill your vision, it dictates all the books you buy, the magazines you don't buy, the things you don't waste money on. You know, I can tell where you're going by just looking at your library. I can walk into your house and see the magazines you read and tell you your future. Because... Or the programs you are watching. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. I mean, it, it chooses your television programs sure. as well. I mean, a lot, people like myself and yourself, we, we, we are driven by what we, what we, where we want to go. And that chooses what we do, how we, what we do with our time. That's right. And that's one of the other reasons why visions sometimes fail is because people misuse their time. Uh, your vision chooses how you spend wait, your wait. time. Visions fail because people misuse their time. Right. That is a powerful statement. Yeah. Because vision chooses how you use your time. See, the minute you get a vision for your life and you know where you want to go, it immediately begins to possess you and control your decisions. Is that why Jesus, when he sent the 70, said, on the way, salute no man. Don't be distracted by other right. people's troubles. Absolutely. Absolutely. Focus on what I'm giving you to do. You know, Jesus had a family, but he chose his friends based on where he wanted to go. Not true. He was very vision-driven, purpose-driven. He knew that if he wanted to get to where he wanted to achieve his ultimate fulfillment, he would have to discard some things. There are some friends that you have to stop associating with based on where your destination is. You know, I was driving down Florida one time, uh, down the turnpike, and I saw all of these exits. And uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, he said, are those good or bad exits? I said, I, I don't know. He said, well, all, e all exits are good, but not all exits are right. Right is determined by destination, not good. As a matter of fact, the enemy of right is good. Mm. Because some things that you may find good are not right for you. And it, it, it hit me driving down that highway. I realized that there's no such thing as a bad exit. All of them are good. But my destination determines which one was right for me. So you can choose any exit you want in life and end up in the wrong place. But is it a bad exit? No, it's a good exit depending on if that's where you want it to go. In other words, you've got to pass a lot of good things in order for you to achieve the right thing. Amen. Satan distracts people from their vision, not by encouraging them to do something bad, but he tries to tempt them to do something good. Because if he can preoccupy with doing good things, he prevents them from doing the right thing. Yes. I want to tell you something, dear Pastor. You just said something earlier was so powerful. I was asked a question when I was nine years old by a sister, a Catholic sister in Israel. I was, I was uh, taught by Catholic nuns, mm. and one of the Catholic sisters asked me as a nine-year-old boy, I remember the place I was walking down the road. We had just gone to church and coming back to school where I was attending in Jaffa. And she was asking the little kids, and what will you be when you grow up? And he said something, what will you be? And then she came to me, and what will you be? When? I said, a priest. I will be a priest. I always knew I'd be in, in the ministry. My mentality was priest because I was wow. in a Catholic school. Yeah. I always knew it. How true you are. God gives us. From a child. From a child, we have mm -hmm. a dream. We have an idea. Mm -hmm. I had dreams about myself preaching. You know, I would see my, myself preaching with a white suit when I was just a kid. Yes, you saw it. I saw it. I saw and the you're multitude. doing it I'm now. doing it. Yeah. When I sold ice cream, I saw multitudes of people. I would, I would mm -hmm. tell a fellow named Bob Tenner, I'd say, Bob, I keep seeing masses in front of me. I'm preaching. He said, oh, you're going crazy. I wasn't going crazy. That's right. I was seeing, seeing a vision of God.